Today we are going to talk about the concentration of different cell loads along the length of proximal tubule. We know that in the proximal tubule, the concentration of some substances uh, decreases and some substances remain the same while other substances increase. For example, the concentration of glucose keeps on decreasing along the length of proximal tubule, while the concentration of creatinine and urea keeps on increasing along the length of proximal tubule, while the concentration of sodium and chloride uh, nearly remains the same along the length of proximal tubule. This thing is being shown with the help of this graph. Now this graph, is, it shows the uh, tubular fluid by plasma concentration along the y-axis and it is showing the proximal tubule length along the x-axis. And now different uh, curves have been drawn for different solute. For example, this lowermost curve is for the amino acids, this blue color is for the glucose, this green color is for the bicarbonate, this is for creatinine. Now, we have discussed in detail that urine formation begins with the filtration process when fluid is filtered in the Bowman's capsule and the filtrate enters the uh, nephron tubules and it keeps on moving along the tubule. Then after filtration there is reabsorption. Some of these substances are reabsorbed from the proximal tubule into the blood. And then there is secretion as well. Some substances after being filtered here are even secreted into the tubule. So some of the solutes are going out, they are reabsorbed, while some of the solutes are secreted inside apart from being filtered here. Now, this is the urine formation process. We have discussed in detail the filtration process, how the filtration increases, how decreases, what are different uh, conditions which increases or decreases the filtration process. Then we have uh, discussed in detail the reabsorption process, reabsorption of glucose, reabsorption of amino acids, reabsorption of sodium chloride and how they help each other. Now, if to properly, if you want to properly understand the filtration reabsorption, you can watch the previous videos. Today, we are only talk, talking about the, the concentration of different solutes along the length of the proximal tubule. While reabsorption process is going on and the, the, the filtrate after filtration process enters here. Now, this is the same diagram as we have uh, discussed previously. Like this one is, uh, this is the glomerulus. This is the glomerulus and the filtration process occurring in the uh, Bowman's capsule. This is the Bowman's capsule and this is the proximal tubule. And the reabsorption occurs here from the tubular, uh, proximal tubule into the blood and the secretion is from the blood, peritubular capillaries into the, uh, into the tubule. So when the reabsorption process starts, when the reabsorption starts, some of substances are absorbed more than the other substances. Now, if after reabsorption process, the concentration of a solute remains the same as its concentration in the blood, then it will be considered as O1. So you see here tubular fluid concentration by plasma concentration. So if there is this y-axis is basically showing this, the concentration of something in the tubular fluid by its concentration in the plasma. So if it is one, if it is the same, if for example, in case of sodium, the concentration of sodium along the length of proximal tubule remains the same as its concentration in the plasma. So its concentration curve remains straight at the level of one. Its concentration remains the same at, the, at one and it there is no difference along the length of the proximal tubule. This X axis is basically showing the length of the tubule. Now, if you compare it with the amino acids, then you see that if the amino acids enter here, they are being reabsorbed. They are being reabsorbed into the blood. They are being reabsorbed and their concentration in the tubule decreases. Their concentration in the tubule decreases as compared to its concentration in the blood, in the plasma. It means the concentration of amino acids in the plasma is more than its concentration in the tubular fluid and along the length of proximal tubule, along the length of proximal tubule, its concentration keeps on decreasing towards the end of proximal tubule. Same is true for glucose. Glucose when it enters here, it is being reabsorbed as we have previously discussed in detail with the help of a diagram. I can find it somewhere. I can't find it now. But you know, the, the, the glucose is being reabsorbed. The glucose is being reabsorbed and its concentration along the length of proximal tubule, its concentration along the length of proximal tubule keeps on decreasing. And this decrease is in relation to its concentration. Uh, in it, Basically, this is in relation to its concentration in the plasma. So it simply means that the concentration of glucose in this proximal tubule keeps on decreasing is compared to its concentration in the plasma. So in the start of proximal tubule, this is the start of proximal tubule. At this level, if this glucose is filtered, so at the start of proximal tubule at this level, its concentration in the tubule is just like its concentration in the plasma. So its level is one. Then as glucose moves along the tubule, it is being reabsorbed, 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 and its concentration keeps on decreasing because it is entering the blood. It is entering the blood. So its concentration keeps on decreasing as compared to its concentration in the blood. So its concentration in the tubule keeps on decreasing. Same is true for bicarbonate. But now you see this curve is a little bit higher as compared to the curve for glucose in amino acids. So, so bicarbonate along the length of proximal tubule is also being reabsorbed. It is also being reabsorbed into the blood, but not as much as it's uh, as much as compared to the glucose. So its concentration keeps on decreasing along the tubule because it is being reabsorbed, but its concentration will not decrease that much as that of amino acids or glucose. Now, the importance is that amino acids and glucose are very important. Amino acid and glucose are very important. If they are not reabsorbed at this level, they will keep on going along the tubule and ultimately they will be excreted in the urine. But the body does not want to excrete the glucose in amino acids and bicarbonate in urine normally. So the body will be will keep on reabsorbing. It will keep on reabsorbing. At the start of the tubule, its concentration will be high and along the tubule, its reabsorption will be occurring and its concentration along the tubule will be decreasing. 
and it's because they are really important and the body is trying to conserve the glucose and amino acid and prevent it for, from uh, like going out in the urine. Now, if you look at the concentration of sodium, you will see that its concentration throughout the tubule remains the same. Its concentration along the tubule remains the same. Now, it's because the, 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 the as soon as the sodium is reabsorbed, as soon as the sodium is reabsorbed, water will also get reabsorbed depending upon the amount of sodium reabsorbed. So if one sodium is absorbed, same amount of water is reabsorbed. If two sodium ions are reabsorbed, same amount of water will be reabsorbed. So as we are talking about the concentration, so the concentration remains the same. Its amount, the amount of glucose will, uh, sorry, the amount of sodium may decrease, but its concentration will not decrease because it is being followed by water. And when water is reabsorbed, the concentration remains the same because ultimately concentration is dependent upon the number of particles in the special uh, or specific amount of water. In case of amino acid and glucose, they are not followed by water. So their amount decreases in the tubule as well as their concentration decreases. In case of sodium, its amount keep on decreasing. It is being reabsorbed, but its concentration remains the same because in case of sodium and chloride, they are followed by water. So its concentration in the tubule remains means the same pretty much the same so that's why they stay at level one now there are a few substances like urea and creatinine which are not not very much important and the body basically wants to get rid of urea and creatinine so what happens that that is the urea and creatinine are filtered their concentration along the tubule keeps on increasing as compared to their concentration in the plasma it means that the amount their concentration in the tubule is is increasing it is increasing as compared to their concentration in the plasma more more urea and creatinine are entering the tubule as compared to their creatinine, uh, their amount in the plasma because the body wants to get rid of these substances. They are not actively reabsorbed. They are allowed to move along the tubule and get out of the body. Some amount of urea is reabsorbed, but uh, overall uh, there is no reabsorption of creatinine. But if you compare it with glucose, the body will be reabsorbing amino acid and glucose and bicarbonate so that their concentration along the tubules are decreasing. As the length of the proximal tubule is increasing, the concentration of glucose and uh, amino acids will be decreasing, but the concentration of creatinine and urea will be increasing because the body wants to conserve glucose, amino acids, up to some extent the bicarb, but the body does not want to conserve creatinine. The body wants to get rid of creatinine. It should be thrown out in the urine. So that's how these curves correlate with the concentration of different solutes along the length of the proximal tubule. Thanks a lot for watching the video.